Did you ever wonder why a skater pulls in her arms and pulls her legs together to spin faster? That's uh, one of the th things that we'll cover in this chapter. It's on rotational dynamics. Dynamics is when you're thinking about the forces that cause rotational, in this case, rotational motion. So there, we're going to make a distinction of two different types of motion. In translational motion, all points on an object travel on parallel paths. So the tips of his toes and the top of his head as he jumps from one side of the trampoline to the other, they follow parallel paths. This path by the, uh, of, the, of the toes and this of the top of his head. That's what we call translation. That's what chapters three and four um, mostly were referring to. Um, in the previous chapter, chapter eight, we actually started thinking about um, rotational motion, and we thought about kinematics and how uh, it talked about angular acceleration. And that's when you've got, um, for, th for this particular case, you've got both translational motion, the center of mass is moving, but the object is also rotating about its center of mass. And um, so this chapter is mostly confined to thinking about rotational motion. So Newton's second law a net force causes an object to have an acceleration with a proportionality constant equal to the mass of the object. And we're now going to ask what causes an object to have an angular acceleration. And we will write down an equation that looks like Newton's second law, except that on the left side we'll replace forces by what are called torques and we'll replace the translational acceleration, A, with the angular acceleration that we talked about in the last chapter. So torque. One way to think about torque is as is, is a turning force. So we're asking how much of a turning force there is for different places you can apply a real, a normal force. So this is just a regular old force, like pushing with your hand or whatever. And where are you going to push on this door in order to get the most turning force? Well, if you push right on the hinge or right next to it, if you push on the hinge, you're not going to get any turning force. Um, you're not going to get that door to open at all. If you push uh, part way out, you'll be able to open the door, but you'll have to push really hard. So for a particular given force, the place where you can do the most turning is as far from the axis of rotation as possible. That's a key and a hint uh, for what, what, when a torque is going to be at its greatest. If you push um, perpendicular to the door, you get maximum action. Uh, whereas if you, if you push kind of on the end of the door, pushing on it like this, then you're not going to get much turning force. So the amount of torque depends on where and in what direction the force is applied as well as the location of the axis of rotation. So let's put some flesh on the bones. We're going to define a line of action. So this line, shown here, for example, in this diagram, the line of action is a dotted line that we draw through the force that's creating a torque. That line of action always drew, goes through the force vector. That's all, all we're talking about here. So if we have a force vector that's off at an angle like that, the line of action is, is right along that force vector. And we're going to define what's known as a lever arm. The lever arm is the distance from the axis of rotation. So in this case, here's the axis of rotation. It's a distance between that point and the line of action of the force. 
And you might say, well, how do I, I know how to take a distance between two points. How do I find the distance between a point and a line? And let me tell you, here's the point and here's the line of action. So it goes to infinity in both directions. We're going to define that distance to be the perpendicular distance, the shortest possible distance between this point and this, and this line. This would not be the shortest distance between the point and the line. This would be the shortest distance, and it happens to hit the line uh, at a 90 degree angle. That's the lever arm L. So in this particular case, the lever arm L is the whole width of the door, whatever that is, 32 inches, etc. All right, what about if we're pushing at an angle? So instead of pushing perpendicular to the door, we're trying to open the door by pushing on it at an angle on the end of the door. Well, in this case, the line of action is here, and the distance between the rotation axis and this line is given by that distance here. Again, it's perpendicular to the line, and it's the shortest possible distance between that point and that line. So in this case, as you can see, even though we might have the same force acting, the lever arm is smaller in the same way that if you had applied the force here, halfway along the door, in this case, the lever arm would just have been this distance. So quite clearly, the greater the lever arm, the greater the turning force or torque you're going to be able to, to exert. And in fact, we define torque we use the Greek symbol tau. I don't believe we've used that one yet. Um, it represents torque. And it's equal to either a plus or a minus the magnitude of the force that you're applying times that lever arm. The bigger the lever arm, the bigger the torque you're going to get. And we use um, this a, the, the following convention, that a torque is considered to be positive when the force tends to produce a counterclockwise rotation. So let's look at this particular case in the middle. Um, does this force tend to produce a clockwise rotation of the door about this axis or a counterclockwise? Well, I think you'll see that the force exerted right here is it tends to cause the door to rotate counterclockwise. And in that case, we would use a positive, the, the torque would be considered as positive. The torque is considered to be negative. It's the same convention we used for angular velocity. Uh, the, con the torque is considered to be negative when it produces a clockwise rotation about the axis. That's the definition of torque. Torque is F, the magnitude of the force, times the lever arm with a plus sign if it's counterclockwise and a minus if it's clockwise. Let's do a demonstration. This is a demonstration of the lever arm and the importance of the lever arm in determining the torque. A torque is a turning force and the torque is given by this uh, Greek symbol tau. It's the product of the force magnitude and the lever arm, which is a distance measured in meters. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hand this um, T-shaped piece of wood to my able assistant, Parker, who will grip the wood with his hands. Then I have some hooks here to which I will attach this mass at different locations. So the torque exerted when I attach the mass here will be less than the torque exerted when I attach the mass, say, here. The axis of rotation is here. Uh, Parker will be attempting to prevent this T from going down. And as I attach the mass at farther and farther points from the axis of rotation, the torque will increase because the lever arm is increasing. So let's have a, have a try here, see how tough Parker really is. 
no problem. A lever arm of maybe 20 centimeters. Again, not bad. Not bad at all. And he's starting to strain. <laughs> That's the best I've ever seen anybody do it. So uh, give a hand to Parker. And, um, but Parker, report to us what was the difference. This, the mass was the same, but what was the difference? It gets harder the further it is. It'll start twisting down. Mm -hmm. Because the turning force, that torque, is increasing as we increase that, that lever arm. Perfect. Okay, another example. The Achilles tendon exerts a 790 Newton force. Determine the torque about the ankle joint. So here's the joint. The Achilles tendon is exerting a force pulling up on that heel bone. So here's a diagram of what we've got with the various um, angles and things measured. Um, we're supposed to find the torque about the ankle joint, and here's that joint. All right, here's the line of action of the force. Well, I've got it extended out this way. Here's the axis of rotation. I want to find, I'm, I'll need the, uh, well, we know the, the magnitude of the force is 790 newtons, but now I just need the lever arm. I need the distance between this point and this line. And that's that distance right there. That's my lever arm. We know this distance from the, between the heel, the attachment point of the Achilles tendon, and the ankle joint to be 3.6 times 10 to the minus 2 meters, 3.6 me, uh, centimeters. And we can definitely find the lever arm, L, noting that uh, this is a right triangle and the lever arm itself is the side adjacent to the angle 55. So we know we're going to need the cosine L divided by 3.6 times 10 to the minus 2 is cosine of 55. So, well here it is. Cosine of 50 is L, the lever arm, divided by 3.6 times 10 to the minus 2. Solving for L, uh, plugging in L into here, then we can then find the torque. Now, we didn't talk about the units of torque. It was in the slide where we defined torque. But the units are newtons times meters. And you might say, hang on just a second. That looks a lot like a joule. Um, the unit of, of energy. In fact, newton meters and joules are the same, but normally to distinguish, because this is not an energy, it's a torque, we normally don't call it the joule. We just call it newtons um, times meters. That's how to work those kinds of problems.